Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on video compression using Compressor. Now, there's a new version of Compressor out, which is called Compressor 4, but in many regards, many of the settings and the workflow in Compression 3 are exactly the same. So whether you use Compressor 4 or Compressor 3, you're going to get some value out of this session. My job is to show you how you can improve the quality of your video compression, make it faster, make it look good, and make the file sizes smaller. That's what we're going to accomplish today. I want to do six demos today. The first one introduces you to the interface and shows how to use the built-in settings to transcode a, an H.264 movie to ProRes. Then we'll look at creating custom settings, custom compression settings, custom destinations, custom image sizes using the geometry tab. The demo number two is the one that's going to be the most useful because it shows you how to customize just about everything with the application. Then automation. I could not live without droplets, and I'll show you how to create them and how they work in the third demo. Look at applying some key filters like color correction, gamma settings, watermarking, and timecode burn-in. Creating chapter markers is something that Final Cut 10 does not do, but we can do inside Compressor. Even better, there's a new feature that allows us to import a chapter marker list, which makes the process of creating chapter markers really easy and we can also create markers manually. Finally, I'll wrap up with an illustration on using frame controls to change the speed of a clip or to deinterlace, that is to say, convert a clip from interlace to progressive. The frame controls give us a lot of power, and we'll show you how all of those work, starting with our first demo, which is introduction to the interface and how to transcode to ProRes. This is Compressor. Compressor prefers a screen, which is 1280 by 800 but for these webinars, I work with a 1280 by 720 screen, so I sort of have them squished together a little bit more than usual. If you go up to the Window menu and go down to Layouts, you'll notice that there are five layouts that allow you to change the look of the file. I've created my own custom layout called Larry 1280-720, which I use for this webinar. You can save window layouts and switch between by just going to the Window Layouts option. There are five windows inside Compressor. This is called the batch window, or the job window. This is where you're going to load files that you want to compress. Throughout this entire session today, I'm only going to be loading one file at a time. But there's no practical limit to the number of files you can put in here. You can select them all, apply the entire setting to all of them, or apply different settings, apply multiple settings to the same file. Complete flexibility. But to keep things manageable, I'm going to be working with one file at a time. This is the preview window. This allows us to look at our video, decide if we like the effects that we're creating, place where we set markers. This is the history window. shows us what we've been working on recently. Notice that I compressed some files yesterday. I've been co compressing a bunch of files today. This allows us to both see what we're working on and to find stuff that we've done. The inspector window is next. That's the one in the middle. We don't have an inspector window inside Final Cut 7, but we do inside Motion, inside Final Cut 10, inside Compressor, inside DVD Studio Pro. The inspector is where we make changes, and we'll be using it a lot in today's session. The Settings window has two tabs, Settings, which determines how we compress stuff, and Destinations, which determines where stuff is going to go. We'll also be working here a lot. One more note before we get started on the actual compression. It doesn't make any difference what your source file is. As long as it's a QuickTime file, that's what compressor is going to need. But whether your, your source file is HDCAM or HDV, DV or DigiBeta, whether it's any flavor of video, as long as it's a QuickTime movie, compressor can deal with it. What this means is you spend all of your time determining what you want the file to become. Don't spend time worrying about what the file is. Compressor's already figured that out. I get a lot of emails saying, I've got a 55 gigabyte file. How do I compress that down to a DVD? And the answer is it doesn't make any difference what the size is. All we do is set the final settings. So everything that we do inside Compressor is designed to optimize for the finished compressed file.